I think in principle, all of us will say that the more you test, we've been grumbling that we're not testing enough. The more you test, the better our data is. That one from the public health perspective and control of the outbreak is, is true, obviously. Uh, and you, if uh, the reality, reality is this, we cannot test everyone now, full stop. Uh, well, I, I believe uh, testing everyone blindly just gives you a false sense of well-being. Uh, I think we should still go towards, uh, you know, the syndrome, when you're thinking of um, um, uh, infection prevention measures, you go towards what the patient presents with res respiratory symptoms, what you need to wear, because just because if you if you swap someone who's no symptoms, this is coming for something else, you're just swabbing them so that they can enter the hospital. And uh, if they're negative now, what makes you think that tomorrow or day after they're going to be not negative? Because as you know, there's an incubation period of 14 days. And uh, so, so I, I think just swabbing for the sake of swabbing, uh, just gives someone a false sense of uh, um, uh, well-being, I, I think. Very much. I, I also want to say that um, if, you, if you get a patient who comes in and you depend on the swab to guide your treatment, then I think it's very wrong. I think I agree, history-taking, examination, and then stratifying the patient. So it's again re-stratifying the patient and that should guide your management. Even if you do swab a person, I think if the person needs urgent treatment or surgery or some procedure, it should not hamper that. It, you know, you should not depend on the swab to decide whether I'm going to do the surgery or whether I'm going to, uh, you know, carry on with a procedure. So it all depends. You have to re-stratify the patient. And yes, agree with Shashila again, if you swap today, the person is negative, it's just a false sense of security because it can always keep, uh, turn positive along the, uh, down the road. Uh, so it all goes back to good old medicine when we take a good history and see whether the patient has got risk for, for COVID and then take the appropriate measures rather than swabbing and then taking a history when that comes up positive. I think this is going back to our good old HIV days when everyone said, oh, you know, we're not going to touch a HIV patient under da da da, they swabbed and make sure they're there. So I think, again, we need to go back to good history taking, uh, standard precaution or, or universal precaution, whatever you may call it, and then taking based on uh, what the symptoms are taking the transmission-based precaution uh, 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 um, uh, precaution, and then testing the patient if they fulfill the criteria. And I think testing people who are asymptomatic for non-respiratory reasons at all uh, would take away the time and energy of our labs from looking at patients who need it, who need their results faster. Having said that, going forward, when the when good antigen tests, rapid antigen tests comes along, when we find someone that's good, perhaps that might change a little bit. But I think regardless, the points brought up by the two ladies is absolutely true. Just because someone is swapped negative today, and if you are doing an EGP, I would recommend you you wear whatever is required of an EGP procedure, regardless of the result. We know as of now. At, PC, at the PCR level, even in uh, America, uh, we are talking about false negatives of up to 30%. That is significant. And I, I hope people will think about it. Uh, so I hope people don't take away the energy and time and the focus away from patients who need more. That's all.